Hey, thanks for joining me. I uh, wanted to make this video about my daily uh, sketching supplies, my travel supplies, what I take with me every day, uh, mostly my uh, Maxpedition pouch and a few other fun items for you. So a lot of people ask me what kind of art supplies I use. They see this little kit and as you can tell, it is stuffed with um, pens and brushes and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so I wanted to show you what I've got and go over some of these items here for you. Size wise, this is I think about five by seven. Um, I don't know in terms of how thick it can get, but it's, it's pretty flexible and the longer I use it, the more I can stuff in it, which is kind of fun. Um, it can fit a lot. Uh, right side, um, I carry all my pens and pencils. Uh, and left side is usually uh, brushes, my travel brushes, and my watercolor paints. On this right side, I've got a Rotring Canical Pencil and a Kaweco Special Pencil. They both carry a 0.5 millimeter lead. And I think I have, yes, I have some lead here. Oops. So I, the reason I have two of them is one is for a little bit more precision and control. Uh, it's got a really good grip right here, as you can see. It's like, uh, it's kind of like sand almost, but it doesn't really slide. It doesn't move when you're drawing. So it's really good for that. And it's nice and thin, even though weight wise, it's, it's significantly heavy. And I like that. So that is kind of like my daily drawing tool. And then my Kaweco is nice and short. And this is for when I'm sketching uh, a little bit loosely. I tend to hold it this way, so it's short so I can do that. I can hold it with my, uh, my palms kind of, my hand closed like that, and I can draw a lot more freely and move my arm. And so that's, that's why I prefer this one. That's why I have two. And this is the lead container. And of course, I always like to carry a normal pencil. This is a Faber-Castell. What's cool about this pencil is that it comes with this cover that has a sharpener. So that's really neat. You can just kind of sharpen it on the go and stick it back in um, and just start drawing. Uh, and you can replace these pencils when they're out. So I really like this one. Next, I have my my inks. I have. I sometimes carry fountain pens, but um, I haven't been doing that as much. I've been refilling and cleaning all my fountain pens. These are, you know, classic drafting and sketching pens that um, are very popular. They are waterproof, so whenever I'm doing any kind of ink and wash, I use my these guys and. And I've got the the size five here because with watercolors you can't use the really fine ones um, or the small size ones because the paper is just so rough and thick and it destroys the tip. So this is the size five, and this is great because I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. You can confidently sketch with these pens knowing that you can go and paint over them with no problems of any kind of bleeding or you know mudding of the colors that you've put on you know the watercolors and the water that you just spread all over the sketch so they are ideal in that sense I usually draw better than this but you know for our purposes here. 
I'm drawing my cute little cactus plant that I got from my friend Jade. If you're watching this, thank you. She brought me this little gift from a new art shed, which I'll show you guys later at some point. We'll make a video. Anyway, so when I get to my paints, I'm going to use them and show you how, how nice these pens are and how waterproof they are. Uh, then let's see, we've got we've got our pit pens is what they're called, artist pit pens. They are also from Faber Castell, a great company by the way. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Uh, these pens are also waterproof, um, but they're more like markers than anything. You can see the tip. Uh, I learned about them from Brenda Swanson. I think that's how you say her name. She is a watercolor artist and she sketches with these pens and uses watercolor over them. I got the green one because I, I tend to do a lot of landscapes or you know, plants or, or different things like that. And uh, you can, I think you can add a lot to your sketch by using them. I don't often use them, but they're fun from time to time. Um, let me see, I can show you one. One illustration I used with these pens right here. This is my last sketchbook, it's full. And one of those first sketches, I used my yellow one and I basically outlined this little sketch and um, then painted like I usually do. And it kind of, you know, it gives your, gives your painting a, a little bit of a, a different character to it, you know, that having that that highlight of color, that vibrancy, you know, even especially with something like sunflowers or apples or something related to the color yellow, it can really kind of bring that out. Um, so I like it. Uh, not something I do often, but maybe I need to play with them some more. So anyways, I'll, uh, I'll show you how they too are waterproof and can be trusted. Okay, next here we've got our Japanese tom tombo, tombo, I don't know how to say it, tombo uh, markers. I'm probably not saying it right. Uh, these guys are not waterproof, but, or maybe they're slightly waterproof. They are not known for that necessarily, but they're really great for sketching uh, because they've got a beautiful thin uh, point to them and then you can also use them sideways like this and get that thick brush stroke as well so I, I really like that for sketching it's probably better that you don't sketch on watercolor paper with these because you'll ruin that tip I think but um, yeah they're really fun for sketching. Right now, I've actually, earlier, I've used them for this little sketch here. This is not watercolor paper, but uh, they're nice to get that thick, thin quality. Uh, a lot of cartoonists use pens like this. And then lastly, on the pen side, I've got my white gel pen. You can find these all over Amazon. Uh, all, in fact, all these supplies are on Amazon. This is a Jelly Roll uh, from Japan, and these guys are great for final touches. After you've painted, after you've done your sketch, you can go back and maybe pick up some highlights or leave a few dots here and there, um, a highlight you missed or you painted over, something like that. These are great for, even actually for signing your name. If you've painted something and there's no more white or anywhere you can write your name, you can sign with a wide gel pen. Okay, and back here is where I use my trusty Swiss Army knife. Uh, it is a little bit bigger than I need, probably, but uh, I really like this knife. It's got scissors, um, like right here. So you can cut paper, you can cut anything small, small objects. It's really sharp, actually. And it's got uh, a couple of knives for, um, I use them for, you know, boxes and 
uh, opening boxes or um, maybe sharpening pencils sometimes or you know cutting something small uh, really helpful to have something like this and there's a wine opener because you never know when you need to open a bottle of wine somewhere out there in the wild <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's always good to have one of these knives on you, I think, period. And I've got my cute little ruler here uh, that fits perfectly in my pouch here. Um, it's great for measuring anything on the go. Uh, it's great for making lines for, let's say you're sketching a building or a street scene or you're urban sketching and you need to make some perspective lines. This is obviously great for that. So it's always nice to have. Again, I don't really need it that much, but from time to time, I'll use it. And uh, this actually belongs on this side, but this is uh, just a little eraser that's in the form of a pen, which I like because it's, it's a lot less messy and it can kind of slide in here and you can refill them, I think, which is really neat. Okay, go into our... Um, other side, I'll leave everything right here. I'll start with the with the cheaper ones. This is a Cheap Joe's uh, travel brush. Uh, this is great for um, when you're sketching small sketches and you've got a building or um, a hard edge that you wanna um, you wanna paint real fast. It's it's great for that. It gives you a straight line. And I've got my uh, Gray Matters travel brush it you can buy it in a set or you can buy them individually this is a, a size eight i think it does not hold a, a, a point um it doesn't hold like a like a sharp small point like some of the other brushes i have uh, because it's synthetic material and it's cheaper uh, but it is beautiful for like just normal uh just regular painting and sketching because it bounces back like that pretty fast. So it's not as soft as this as the natural br uh, hair brushes that I'm going to show you here in a sec. But this is great for I pretty much use it most of the time for my daily sketches. And these three right here are my uh, natural hair expensive Kolinsky hair one I've had these for maybe over four years now, been using them regularly. And you can tell that even after all that time, the brush uh, holds a, a pretty good point right here. So as you're painting, um, if you watch some of my shorts, you'll see that I use this brush to cover big areas because it can really spread that paint wide on the paper. So in that sense, they it's a better painting experience. Um, this is beautifully made and designed. Sometimes when you leave these <laughs> really wet, they can grow mold. Um, so you do have to just, you know, dry them with, with a paper towel before you put them back. But yeah, three different sizes. This is highly recommended. Also available on Amazon. And this is my, my one of my favorite brushes actually, also from Da Vinci. It is just a flat, I think, one inch brush. And I love the size. Uh, I actually use it both outside and in, you know, at home. So if you're doing a sky or the foreground or anything like that, it's it's great for that size 20. I need to buy more. I've really abused it. So it is it is actually well made, but I've abused mine and use it like a lot. And that's why it's peeling. <laughs> but last one, I don't use a lot. This is uh, Escoda brushes from Spain, I think. Uh, top top quality brushes, size 10. Um, yeah, they're just a, a good brush. I don't use mine a lot because I don't like this part. I think it's really big. Uh, and when you hold it, it's um, it's great for, honestly, painting a large piece, not so much for travel, even though it is a travel brush. But And last but not least is my uh, paint set. My faithful Schmincke paint set. This is my favorite um, on-the-go paint box. It is light, it is thin, and very sturdy. 
and um, <laughs> oops, I just used it, so it's still wet, sticky. It usually comes with uh, half pans like this, and I think there's eight of them, but as you can see, I've stuffed mine and I've refilled it and reused it, and uh, I've put full-size whole pans in here, um, and then put the half pans in the middle. It's not a place for them to go. Usually you should put your brush in here, but I kind of jammed them in there because I just wanted more colors, and I like a lot of reds and oranges, and got blues, brown and yellow, um, so yeah. I love this little thing, it's so faithful. Uh, and Schmincke is my favorite uh, brand for pans. I think they are the best in re-wetting and they just work with you. They're quick to, to just be ready, honestly, <laughs> to be painted. I can show you here in a second. I can test it out. I'm gonna do some, this has obviously been filled with um, a tube paint. So this is not a, a normal pan, but um, this is. So I'm gonna. I never, I never have greens in my pans. I don't know. I always mix them. I don't like buying green colored pans. I don't know. But as you can see, uh, both of the pens that we used are resisting mixing in with the paint. And they are doing a good job just outlining what I'm painting here. And as you can see, they work really well. There we go. And I think that's everything. And I, yeah, I always kind of have a couple of these little guys. Got one more thing. I usually keep, um, forgot to talk about this. I usually keep white paint on me in a, in a tube just because none of these pans come with white. Uh, and so I always have an extra tube in here in case I want to use it when I'm finalizing a painting. But yeah, all of this, I mean, we have really a lot of supplies in this pouch and uh i can't i mean it's it's only a cheap pouch from amazon it's called maxpedition the company uh i believe they're made for like kind of like camping and hiking and the outdoors which which i love to do but i've used it for my art supplies because it is perfect and i've tested a lot of different bags and uh, pen bags and things like that and I was never able to find anything better than this little guy here um, so that's why I have it and it just yeah it just fits so much and for such little money I mean I think I only paid like 20 or 25 dollars for it and I've been using it non-stop for like four years so and I probably can go for, you know, 20 more. <laughs> and I keep this usually in my purse or in my backpack or um, it's always with me. The next thing I wanted to show you, you know, outside of having my um, Schmincke paints, uh, paint box, I have ordered one of those fancy brass watercolor boxes. Uh, sadly, I've, it's, it's getting a little, it's getting some blemishes and uh, some some brass discoloring, I guess, but it's still beautiful and I'm gonna buy something to clean it with. But this is, um, this is a brass box, brass paint box that's just beautiful. And uh, once I'm done with my pans, uh, my Schminke pans, I'm gonna carry this instead, but it's still small. Um, I've got, I mean, look how beautiful this thing is. I have used it, so there's paint in it. Um, and I will, you know, lots of mixing space, uh, two spots for, um, I guess, uh, if you have a wash or if you have something big to paint, you can, you can fill a lot of water and paint in here. So yeah, this little thing, 
small, beautiful. Uh, I also take water in this little um, container and it doesn't leak. It's, it's off of Amazon. Um, I don't know what I googled. It's just a little Nalgene basically, like a plastic Nalgene and it does not leak at all. You can, I bought actually a couple of them so they're perfect for on the go. Next item is this viewfinder. It was in one of my previous videos. I, I usually use it if I'm out uh, doing some plein air. It helps you uh, compose your picture as you're looking out in nature. And it even has like an 11 by 14, 8 by 12, 9 by 12 sizes. It's a, it's a great little tool and it helps you frame your, your painting and frame what where you want to zoom in on a on a view so it's called a view catcher um i've got one of these uh spray bottles this is good for just if you want to add texture or splashes i think i reviewed this one it's it's the kadi paper sketchbook it's indian paper indian handmade paper 100 percent cotton really nice paper um it's it's what I'm trying to fill right now. I, I filled all my other sketchbooks. I actually just painted this uh, at lunch yesterday while it rained, it was really fun. But yes, so right now this is what I'm carrying with me with this EDC pouch. So it's my sketchbook. Next thing and the last thing I'm gonna show you is this um, Stablo, Stabello, Stablo. Uh, it helps you hold your uh, sketchbook and brushes and paints while and water uh, while you while you paint so you can be standing and holding this so you've got your sketchbook you've got this holds your brush or brushes and pens and so you just hold it like that push that in and this is for your water water cup it's got magnets built in so you can also have your paint box on here and honestly I think it's better with a smaller sketchbook than this one so like this one this is perfect because you've got everything just ready for you right here you can get a little cup stick it in there put some water and uh you're ready to go. So that's my last item for you guys. If you have any questions on the supplies that um, that I've talked about, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll be quick to answer you. Um, let me know if you've enjoyed this video and if you want more videos like this. Thanks again!